you're ready to be surrounded by LGR things because that's what you're mounted to right now. Greetings and welcome to an LGR thing about the Creative Surround Station, which is a, a set of arms and things that extend outward like this so that they can go behind your head and you can mount uh, surround sound speakers on a big... You know what? It's just easier for me to show you. Let me remove this. Yeah, here we go. So it's this whole armature mount stand situation released in 1999. And yeah, you get your, your speakers and you put them on here and then you take this whole thing and set it underneath your monitor so that it's just ready to go and you don't have to set up a bunch of wires going around your floor or across the ceiling or through or whatever. You just sort of go through here and yeah, it's such a cool idea. And I had never heard of it until fairly recently when an LGR viewer named Kai, who worked at Microsoft for 31 years, offered very kindly to send this over. And it was just so odd and I'd never seen it before that I had to say yes and just check it out. And as I was getting my uh, area set up here and looking for some cool new speakers or really old speakers to set up with some of my old computers for LGR, I'm like, oh man, I should get this ridiculous thing out and test it out while I'm at it. So here we is. And yeah, apparently Kai used to have this in his cubicle at Microsoft back in 1999 to 2005 or so to play Counter-Strike on the corporate LAN after hours. <laughs> he did specify after hours, you know, never any other time, I'm sure. But yeah, dude, just the fact that this was used at Microsoft to fart around, playing some games and stuff, that is just kind of neat. But you know, it's a Creative Labs thing. And while I'm not a huge fan of the company necessarily, I do like a whole lot of their products from back in the day. So let's take a closer look at this one, the Surround Station, which sold for $80 from 1999 to 2002 or so. And it was designed to be compatible with Creative's entire range of Cambridge Soundworks satellite speakers, namely the Desktop Theater 2500 and 5.1 and the FPS 2000 and 1000 bundles like I have here. And yeah, this is the thing that I was getting out of storage and was about to set up and sort of kicked off this particular video. I don't know, it's gonna be some other videos too, I'm sure. But as for why they made this, well, I don't know. I think it's pretty obvious. I mean, setting up surround sound speakers, especially in a late 90s desktop office type of situation, you know, wherever in the home, in the office, doesn't matter. It's always kind of awkward. You know, you either mounted them behind you somewhere on tripods or on a wall, on your chair, whatever. I've tried all kinds of things over the years and yeah, that's the whole idea here, is that you can have the speakers in the rear behind you when you need them, and then you can fold them out of the way when you don't. And yeah, not only is it going to be held down by a lot of weight from the CRT itself, but the thing is no slouch in terms of construction quality for the most part. It's mostly made of iron and steel weighing 9.4 kilograms, or about 20 and a half pounds just on its own. Now this one is a little worse for wear, I guess. I mean, some of the mounts aren't as strong as they used to be. Some of the arms are a little bit floppy now and plastics are worn down from years of use. There's a couple of bolts missing. And of course the sticker there on the top is just coming apart. Overall, it seems to still be holding up and I haven't tried it yet, but I'm really interested to do so. But before we do that, we gotta get this Cambridge Soundworks FPS 1000 kit open. <laughs> always wanted one of these. I mean, I've had a couple over the years, but never in the box. Anyway, let's get this thing open. Yeah, ready for that late 90s surround sound experience. The 4.1 kind of quadraphonic surround experience, actually. Uh, yeah, there's no center channel speaker, just two front, two behind in the sub. This thing retailed for, I want to say it was $100 back then, although this one has a sticker for $89 back in 1998 or whenever this was on sale. And yeah, we got uh, a whole bunch of wires. Ooh, look at that. That's fresh, man. Those classic cubes. Yeah. Got some uh, mounting bits here and a delightful sub. It's pretty wild to see one of these this clean, not yellowed, just lovely creamy beige off-white goodness oh look at that pc works four points around yeah i see these not 
uncommonly, you know, uh, at thrift stores and whatnot. Bass control, power on and off, power in. And yeah, this is a uh, Cambridge Soundworks. They were a real company. Um, I mean, <laughs> well, I mean of, of course they were, but like they were their own independent company, but Creative Labs snapped them up in 1997 as they did with so many other audio companies back then. One reason I'm not a really big fan of them as a company really and their practices over the decades. On a related note, I just saw that the CEO of Creative Technology actually passed away as I was recording this, who founded the company back in 1981 in Singapore and kicked off the whole Sound Blaster line and everything else. RIP to an OG. Oh hey, so we got some sticks. The tripod set up for the rear speakers, which we won't be using because we get our surround station and our big old beefy power supply. 12 volt, 28 watts. These are just plastic, by the way. But yeah, I uh, have all the memories seeing these things set up in stores and like, you know, demo units at Office Depot, Best Buy, or wherever. And I was always impressed, like, with how teeny tiny these little like two inch speaker cubes are. I remember them sounding pretty good. I don't know, all right. I, it's been a while since I've heard these. They're fine, I'm sure they're fine. But it was the sub that did a whole lot of the work, of course. Uh, but yeah, I mean, this was like the low end for uh, Creative Labs surround. And you know, they also had their just regular 2.1s as well with just that sub and just two of these, which you could set this up that way too. In fact, a lot of times when you see these in thrift stores, you'll see like this sub and just a couple of the speakers and the rear speakers are missing. And uh, what are these? Oh yeah, these, these just go to the tripods, don't they? So you just like, well, you know, whatever. You stick them in, in the holes. <laughs> so yeah, we got four of these. I guess they're just gonna be all the same. Little RCA on the end there. It is gold plated or appears to be. That's something. As to how these actually mount, <laughs> I don't know. Obviously, if they were just going right there, you know, eh, that's fine. But actually getting it onto the surround station, I don't know. Well, let's find out. All right, let's get this monitor moved. Right, so far so good and this part here it actually slides more in place like that and it's not nearly as wobbly so that's good and then whenever you need to do that you can just pull it out and yeah and of course these are hollow so the idea is just to you know get the cables in there and string them through and just sort of go up and over and then through that and then it comes out the back over here and this part is where you can adjust the arms themselves that just sort of locks into place so you can have it up and above a bit sort of pointing down at you the thing i'm really having trouble with though is this right here where the speakers are supposed to attach so you have this just sort of on a on a ball joint and it's supposed to you know point down towards your head but uh you can see what we're working with I don't have any way to attach this. And it did not come with any mounting hardware. Perhaps it originally did. The only thing was this one bolt, I think that's supposed to go around this way. And there was a wing nut that went on the other side or something. Uh, because looking at some pictures, I mean, not that there's many, I, you cannot find a whole lot about this in terms of images and I don't have a manual, but yeah, it looks like it, there were models where you could just slide it in place. Obviously that's not gonna work with this. I thought, oh, maybe does it just slide on there? I mean. It doesn't actually go fully all the way in. And you know, with these, that's literally just a stand. So, let's see what else I got going on in the workshop back there. All right. Everything's all strung through. That was a little bit tricky, but got it done. And uh, yeah, I just mounted these with good old 3M mounting strips. Stuck a little rubber band on there, taking a cue from the 90s pictures. Although I don't think it's doing much of anything, but it makes me almost feel better, not really, whatever. Also taking a cue from the 90s and all the photos, they're on top of the monitor for some reason. So we'll stick them up there and see how that goes. And yeah, this is all shielded, so we'll be fine magnetically. All right, we just get this mess plugged into our sound card and uh, we'll turn everything on. All right, while I was getting it set up, uh, I was like, where the heck are the three and a half mil audio cables? So just grabbed a couple of random ones here 
plugged it in and uh, it sounds bad, like just. So much noise, no matter what I do, no matter what volume it's at, muting everything, doesn't matter. So looking in the documentation and what is that? The volume control. I totally missed that. It was a whole other thing. <laughs> so that makes sense. There's only bass volume control on here, not the actual speakers. So that hopefully will help the noise factor. Also, uh, the subwoofer is not shielded. The little satellites are, but not the sub, so I need to move this. Now, there we go. We got volume. Little knob here, and it actually uh, is going out the right levels now. So no awful hiss or anything like that. Finally. Let's uh, get this changed over into 4.1 mode, quadraphonic. And yeah, I know, recording in stereo here, not gonna really be able to hear quadraphonic, but hey, let's do it anyway. We should have some test programs from Creative. Yeah, let's try this THX deal. Front, left, front, right, rear, left, rear, right. Oh my. She's right in my rear left. And rear, left, right, rear, right. All right, well, that is a thing. Oh, hey, we can calibrate stuff. I guess I'll try to calibrate this a little bit because these la uh, yeah, the rear speakers are like 10 inches from my head. It's not letting me input stuff, so I guess I'll just stick it to 11 inches. Rear, left. That uh, doesn't sound any different to me. <laughs> uh, whatever, it's fine. All right, well. I guess uh, it is now time to play some games, and so let me move the cameras and such, and we'll go ahead and do that and enjoy ourselves the surround experience of the late 90s on PC, according to Creative Labs. Yeah, it's a bit of a thing getting inside of here. Uh, all right, so uh, <laughs> inside of the Creative surround station. It feels nice and cozy. Got speakers and speakers. And I kind of like that they're so close. Instead of, I don't know, I'm just used to messing around with surround things that are uh, farther away <laughs> than these. These are like right up near my ears. I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing. Guess we're about to find out. So let's play some Counter-Strike because Kai did that back in the day. And that feels like this should be like returning home for these speakers. And you know, he played it in an office, so let's do CS Office. Ooh. Immediately hearing footsteps and gun things all around me. What are we doing? Passages. I don't think you're supposed to do that. All right, so yeah, uh, this is working well. I can hear dudes coming around corners and stuff extremely accurately, uh, having the speakers like right there. <laughs> it's quite nice. It's almost closer to what I'm used to with VR headsets. But yeah, I don't actually have a, uh, a surround sound setup for anything in my house other than just VR. I don't know. I haven't had it set up for such a long time because it's usually an inconvenience, especially at a desktop. So this definitely helps that problem. You know what? Good kill. I was being a doofus. Anyway, uh, this is kind of great. <laughs> I wish this kind of thing were still being sold somewhere. I, I would have uh, a legit temptation to get something like this for... Um, I mean, you could use this for modern stuff, but it's a little iffy, worse for wear after however long it's been. This is good stuff. It's an interesting and effective solution. Makes me wish I was recording this in real surround audio. I mean, there's the problem of not just recording it in the first place, but <laughs> also just uh, getting it on YouTube. Like you can share surround audio video files on YouTube, but you know the only way to appreciate it is then if you have uh, surround set up yourself, whether it be actual surround speakers or headphones or whatever. And then what's the point? Like if you already know what surround sounds like, then you know what this sounds like. It's just surround. There's nothing crazy going on here. About the only thing to 
to comment on is like the speakers themselves, the quality of them, and you know they're fine. Did a little little two inch speakers are pretty tiny. Uh, obviously, the sub sounds great still. You know it's probably what a four inch, five inch woofer in there. But yeah, it's bringing back some uh, late '90s memories, man, for sure. <laughs> Oh, I really wish I had a setup like this back then. Uh, really, the only time I ever experienced it uh, was at demo units, you know, in, in stores, game stores, or uh, they had a setup like this at actually Gateway Country. And they also had one at a Sam's Club and I want to say Office Depot at one point. I loved messing around with those demo units and such. Never actually had any, like, friends or family that had a setup like this. Always wanted one, though. Thought it was super cool. And it still is. It still is cool. I know you're down there. Tom, or whatever your name is. I'm gonna kill you, Tom. Gotcha. Yes. Gotcha. It's just so much better. <laughs> With the uh, surroundness going on. Even just 4.1, it makes a big difference. They can tell the lack of center, though. That's for sure. Like, these speakers up on top of the monitor, it's fine, actually. The placement isn't that bad. It kind of gives that effect of being center speakers, just stereo close together. But, uh, it's enough of the Counter-Strike bots. Let's do uh, some Unreal Tournament 99 bots. Because. Even that's coming out of the rear speakers. Ooh, and so is the menu. Oh, that's weird. So yeah, the music is all coming from the front speakers on top of the monitor there, but menu sounds are behind me. <laughs> okay. And I want to say this is one that uses uh, EAX. I know it also supports like All Real and all that, but we have uh, Creative Audigy 2's yes something or other, I don't know, in there right now in the Windows XP thing. So hardware 3D sound and surround sound are both enabled. Let's go. This is already sounding awesome. <laughs> There's like so much chaos that I'm actually not sure if the surround is even beneficial here. <laughs> Cause it's just, just, just crap flying everywhere all around me all the time. Uh, sure does sound damn cool though. That's weird. Yeah, some of the spots in the map are just like oddly going back and forth between being able to hear punchy sound up here on these monitor front speakers, but the ones behind me sound kind of like crap no matter what, but then it's sometimes just that and there's no sub. I don't know if that's an EAX quirk or what. That's being kind of weird. I don't know. I'm going to say that's more of a software issue. Ha <laughs> ha! Like, obviously, these little speakers aren't great to begin with, the little two-inch things. But they definitely sound worse here and there. Yeah. So I'm going to try it here without uh, the 3D accelerated sound, which I think is EAX in this case, and then uh, just the surround mode turned on. Nah, it's, it's still weird. Yeah, you hear that? It's like the bass is just cutting in and out. Uh, yeah, kind of an odd quirk. Don't know what's causing that, but whatever, man. Unreal Tournament's awesome, and even more awesome in Surround. All right, I want a racing game for the last one here. Uh, what do we want to pick? Something late 90s. Uh, go with Need for Speed. High stakes. I don't think I've actually played that one in Surround before, or Quadraphonic, whatever. Because, yeah, when I had the last surround set up on a PC, it was like 2008, 9, when I had a Logitech 5.1 thing, and by then it was like uh, Windows Vista, right? Ugh. So, uh, high stakes wasn't exactly on my agenda. Let's see what kind of sound mode we have. Ah, D3D slash EAX mode. All right. I'm excited. Love this game. Oh yeah. Three, two, <laughs> one, go! 
Oh, that's super cool. I can hear the guy right to my right. <laughs> Out of my way! <laughs> oh, the carnage behind me. So, all right, it's kind of doing that thing again where it's like things in front of me don't quite have as much punch as they should, and things behind me sound kind of odd or oddly balanced. Sometimes it's louder or quieter than I think in both front and back. I don't know, it's just, it's inconsistent. Either way, this is awesome. <laughs> It's really cool. Just being able to hear like, yeah, like, meow, meow, there goes the cops or the opponent beside me or whatever, and like the, the damage happening, like crashing behind me or crashing to the left. Yeah, I've just never really uh, made the time to go back and try some of this surround type of stuff on a, uh, yeah, selection of late 90s games and hardware. Man, combine this with like uh, 3D on a CRT, the NVIDIA Vision, or like the Elsa Revelator, some kind of cool 3D glasses that you can use on a CRT. With this, dude, that'd be like peak late 90s gaming, early 2000s gaming experience. I've got a number of those headsets back there I've been meaning to cover, and glasses and stuff for a long time. So tricky to be able to show that kind of stuff in a video effectively, so. <laughs> Uh, maybe someday. I don't know. Just gotta do it for fun like I'm doing here. I've been putting this off for similar reasons. Anyway. Well, I suppose that's about it for the creative surround station. Man, this is really darned effective and simple and just, uh, yeah, for 80 bucks plus uh, the cost of some speakers, somewhere like $180 there, plus the cost of a 3D sound card and, you know, computer and internet. A few hundred bucks, right? Um, added on to whatever computer you had back in the late 90s, early 2000s. This would have been fantastic, and I am sad that I haven't really experienced anything quite like this until now. Again, experience surround sound plenty of times, plenty of ways, but this, this is pretty cool. <laughs> and now that I'm done, you know, I can just get this crap and put it out of the way like that, you know, and then it's not so much uh, in the way anymore. <laughs> It just, it just works, and it's neat, and I'm glad I got to experience it, and I hope you enjoyed uh, seeing, hearing, sort of, the experience as well, even though it's way better in person. And if you did enjoy this episode of LGR, then stick around for others that are always in the works. And let me know if you had this particular sound station or what solution you used for your desktop computer gaming surround things back in the day. And as always, thanks for watching. <laughs>